Here at Simply Garden, with over 50 years of gardening experience, I believe in keeping things simple and productive while gardening in your own backyard. Well, warm, good uh, summer, good afternoon to you, and uh, thanks for joining us and uh, checking out what we're going to do here. we got a big project ahead of us here. It's um, We're in southern New Hampshire, zone 5, and my early peas that I planted back in uh, March 24th, First, because we had plastic covering, hoops, wires with plastic, and I put blankets on top to get these things going because we had some 18 degree nights um, in the March, definitely 20s. I thought I was going to keep them and let these run a little longer. I thought we were going to get some peas that are worth keeping, but really there isn't there isn't much we're saving here. Uh, I got broccoli that is dying to get in here, and um, so I'm going to go ahead and rip this out. I've got my acorn squash coming along well in here. That needs some more sunshine, which will, this will help get this opened up here. And then we got beans coming along very well. So the, the uh, plan here is how this works is as I plant the, the beans, the peas are coming up, plant the acorn squash in here. And as the beans finish up in like about a month, the acorn squash will continue to be pushed that way because we're going to put some broccoli and cabbage down here and red cabbage uh, more for um, late August harvest. And uh, that's the plan here. And beans are doing phenomenal this year. I mean, I am amazed how thick um, they just just the growth of blossoms on these. So we're gonna have more than enough. Uh, we freeze a lot of it. it does very well, but um, nothing like fresh beans. Wow, these are awesome. So, anyways, I'm gonna start uh, ripping all this out. This gets put in the compost bin. Then we'll weed that out of the. Uh, got some crabgrass growing around the acorn squash and get that uh, squared away. I just finished prepping all my strawberry beds for uh, next year, which consisted of um, using strawberry fertilizer that I get from uh, Gardens Alive. Also, um, uh, put some uh, compost in among all the plants. Gave them a nice drink of fish emulsion. Moved some plants around from other beds that I've uh, taken out. Yeah, I had hit their max for a few good plants, transplanted a few of those around. Or I had glass, grass clipping out further out there. I put grass clippings around as I cut my lawnmower. It's kind of a hot, dry summer this year, but we'll get more grass clippings around these plants and help retain the moisture better too. But we'll water. I'm watering right over there where that one wrapped up. So we'll um, hope for a better crop next year. It wasn't the best this year, but that's that's gardening some years are good some years aren't and you know you make the best of what you get so we're just going to just rip this out this will all go in the compost bin nothing gets wasted and i'll just watch the peas see if there's a few might be in there to salvage enjoy while you're working you know grab a few here and there if there's anything worthwhile um, the pea brush I'll put aside. What pea brush is basically is just my apple tree and peach tree clippings. Um, that doesn't break down too quick in the compost bin, so we'll just set that aside and throw it out in the woods and it'll do its own thing over the years. Really good crop of peas this year. I was very, very happy, very impressed. Um, about a week off in harvest. Usually we get peas around the first end weekend of, the, of, um, of June, and we got them more like around the second weekend, so it wasn't too bad a week off. It's fine. I want to be careful not to uh, disturb the roots of uh, the acorn squash too much as I'm weeding. And I always like to take the dirt and uh, sprinkle on the the bottoms of the acorn squash. The acorn squash don't mind a little extra dirt around them. Never seems to help. I mean, it never seems to hurt. I mean, I'm just careful not to disturb the roots. And when this all gets done here, we'll give it a nice deep watering once we get all the plants in. And uh, be off for the uh, the second crop. And also, what I'll do, I have lettuce too, so I'll interplant lettuce in amongst the broccoli. As the broccoli grows, it'll give the lettuce a little shade. And then as the lettuce wraps up, it gives more room to the broccoli. 
So since we're getting two different crops out of one, one space here, and with all the proper um, nutrients, which I'll be fertilizing some a little bit here and doing the lime treatment with the um, with each uh, hole that the uh, plants get, the broccoli and cabbages get planted in so we don't get uh, club root. But we'll give it some nice uh, organic fertilizer and then come back and finish up with fish emulsion. And uh, be sure to nice harvest of broccoli a few months later. In fact, I got a, some beautiful broccoli I want to show you. Well, I'm just thinking of it here. And this hot, this broccoli, it's a little late once again this year. We are usually by now, I'm pretty well done with this bed, but it's just coming now. But to hear some nice, nice heads coming here, nice and tight. Uh, I've powered them a few times with organic powder, to keep the, uh, the cabbage worms off of it. But these are gonna be wonderful. We'll, we'll freeze some, steam some. And uh, my grandchildren love raw broccoli. I prefer cooked. I gotta get this one cooked. Pick the night starting to kind of break out there. But uh, very pleased with the result that one that needs to get taken tonight too. But uh, we're, um, and then we we'll get those nice side shoots coming out. Um, and what I'll do when that bed wraps up, I'll probably plant carrots there. Or I could also use it for my um, cold frame for my fall lettuce. <clears throat> Back to what we were doing. Stay focused, Jim. <laughs> I'm sure we'll all attempt to do that. We jump around a little bit once in a while and think of something. There we go. See, we're getting a little close to the, uh, the crabgrass, getting a little close to the bottom. The, um, sure acorn squash plant there so we don't want to rip it too hard we want to kind of break at it easily because we don't want to disturb its roots cabbage and squashes i mean squashes and um vine products like pumpkins don't like getting their roots disturbed too much they're very hard to transplant you can do them out of a pot but taking one from one spot in the garden transplanting another spot you don't like that too much there we go just wiggle them out nice and easy without disturbing the plant Love acorn squash. Nothing like some nice fresh acorn squash baked up in the fall. Ah, we put the, we just slice them open, steam them, flop them, flip them up after 20 minutes. Um, probably around 375, 400 degree oven. And then we put butter and maple syrup in. Yes, I do harvest, I do tap maple trees out here. And, um, like that's my rough cooker that I use for cooking it. We also do it inside on a wood stove uh, earlier in the, in the in February. I get the bigger crop. I go out. Last sap I go outside, make more room. But um, nothing like your own maple syrup in the fall and your fresh acorn squash right out of the oven. Delicious. Size of this bed is about uh, six feet wide, right around 14, 15 feet long. It's amazing what you can get. Oop, almost, almost careful. I almost pulled the uh, acorn uh, squash plant out of there. We'll get a little extra. Throw in some organic uh, garden fertilizer here. It's uh, five, four, six. It's five parts uh, nitrogen, uh, four parts uh, phosphate, and six parts potash. They also got a little calcium. This one here. Um, it's all organic. We'll just sprinkle around the. I'm gonna sprinkle on the cabbage too. It does need. I mean, the, the uh, acorn squash does need some feeding. And then when I get done with this here, I'll. I said I'll give everything a nice big. Good drink of fish emulsion. There we go.
We'll light the culvert that in. Not the cultivate very digger on there. I say always be careful on the squash plants. Shallow roots, just a light moving the soil, that's all it's needed. Next on the fertilizer, I'll have to leave there. Okay. So what I'm probably going to do, I'm going to probably plant the uh, cabbage, the broccoli, the cabbage. I'm going to kind of stagger them in every 18 inches. So the kind of idea here is where these plants are. I'll put one here, stagger one in there, kind of put it out away from the plant. Just kind of moving around like that to make advantage of that space. Like I said, the, the goal here is to have the squash pushed that way as the beans wrap up in about a month. So I do manly move the vines as I need to. Okay, so we'll go ahead and measure this out, some kind of consistency. So we'll about every, uh, it's every 18 inches apart, should work pretty good there. I'm not sure if I'm, you know, I'm not gonna bother staggering it. I'm gonna go right straight down a roll here because these plants are a little closer than I want them to be, but that's fine. I'm talking to squash are, they're gonna fill right in. And the other thing I gotta be careful with is the woodchuck, it's that time of year, so I will uh, net these down with uh, bird netting. Um, put boards around the edge so they can't get in there, because I've come back. Um, came back from vacation last year and had beautiful lettuce and broccoli all laid in here. Gone. That'll, that'll discourage a good gardener, huh? <laughs> all right. Then we'll plant lettuce kind of like in between these guys here. There's plenty of room for lettuce. If lettuce doesn't grow very long, very big. So we got. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven plants. That's great. And we'll just fill them in with the uh, broccoli and cabbage. And first, we'll get some uh, lime. Seems to work. All my uh, broccoli plants over there, not a single one of them had a problem with cover it. Now the, uh, the, the uh, green cabbage is ready to go too. And just a nice little sprinkling, mix it up a little bit. Okay. Mix those guys up and we're ready to plant. Now I gotta keep these things very watered because it's gonna get 90 tomorrow. But these plants are pretty uh, hardy in their uh, six packs. I mean, their own pots, containers I have them growing in. So we should be fine. Alrighty. We got some of our um, red cabbage here also. Excited to see that doing nicely. I'm gonna fit all these in here. If I do have another crop that'll be coming in 
probably about a week later, so I'm going to take these red cabbages and replant them into bigger pots, like these here, and that way there'll be a more room for the roots to get and not get root brown. Also, some of these uh, broccoli plants here. Um, I'll use a few of them today, but the rest are going to get split. I just some some doubles in them. If you can see those, um, I'll split those apart and put them into uh, larger containers. Put them in the shade for a couple of days, so they get bleached out. And then I got these guys here, which need to also get uh, uh, separated out and um, put into six packs. All right. I'm gonna get something to sit down on. I'll be, uh, have a stool somewhere around here, bench. There, I see it. Over by the corn where I was sitting in the shade earlier. Taking a little break from the heat. There we go. Okay. Now we can get working. Just take a little easy break on the back. <laughs> so this is, uh, I guess I'd have to buy these. These are, I planted these myself here, but um, I knew it was going to be short. The six pack I planted myself. I knew it was going to be short with my sequence because I couldn't, just had a hard time getting some of my uh, broccoli started. But uh, this variety is a pre Pac-Man hybrid. It's sure to give a nice, big, uh, healthy, um, Heads, so we'll um, try this variety out here. Nice root system. Wow, looking really good. I always like to plant broccoli deep in those growing, and we'll come back and put some cutworm collars on these guys, because you know how that goes. <laughs> At least around here, uh, zone uh, five, southern New Hampshire, they like to. Just sneak up all of a sudden and you come home and you come back and you got a plant laying over inside. A little dry. I like to be I'll give these a real good drink of uh, fish emulsion. Really soak them good. Alright. Guess there's a worm here. I don't want that. Yes, I squish worms with my fingers. Haven't, haven't matured to doing the uh, hornworm tomatoes, uh, the uh, tomato um, worms. What do you call them? Hornworms. Those are a little bit um, beyond my ability to squish with my fingers. <laughs> okay. Four, five, six, yep, six of them. Here we go. Then we'll get in one more last planting for the fall, which will probably come out of the um, one of these potato harvests that they wrap up. Those will go in probably the um, middle of August in place the potatoes are growing. And um, it works out. We get uh, we get enough to uh, have some nice fall, late fall broccoli. I do some have to cover with uh, blankets. Sometimes I don't make it because it gets by middle of October. Sometimes it just gets too cold. We'll get down to the 20s and that pretty much wraps it up. But hey, if I get a little something, I'm happy. A little fresh broccoli in the October. All right. So next one, we got one, two, three, four, five whole spots left. I'm going to get. Um, one more cabbage, I mean uh, broccoli, from these six packs over here. Let's grab this guy out of here, he looks pretty good. Actually, I'm going to do one more. Um, I'm going to put a couple of, uh, put a cabbage in there. 
and some red cabbage. This one here looks good. There you go, those are great. I had seeds right, right in the garden actually, and I just transplanted them out of the soil in the garden to six packs, and they've done uh, very well. Okay, so here's my broccoli. Got one here. We'll break this apart. And then, um, a couple of cabbage. And we're good to go. over here. Yep, right here. I actually held this one over. This one was, was hanging around since um, I planted this thing back in March. <laughs> but it got stunted in a six pack. Took it out, put it into a bigger container and it started taking off again. So I think it's going to be just fine. Take this one and put him back into another six pack for further growing. Actually, put this into a regular container like this and give it some more um, some more time. There we go. Okay. So there we go, there's our broccoli, red cabbage, green cabbage. We're gonna give it a good drinking of uh, fish emulsion. And uh, hope you enjoyed this. Thanks for viewing and for subscribing to our channel and hit the, uh, the um, little bell so you can get notifications when new videos come through. We try to get about four, you know, five up in the week. Sometimes we'll get to six or seven, but usually about four or five a week is what we hope for. As we start harvesting more things, we'll keep you updated and uh, keep up the good work yourselves if you're gardeners and you stop again just to enjoy what we're doing here. We we'll really appreciate your, your comments and, um, and just seeing how things are progressing in our simple garden. Have a great rest of your day.